Keep going. Started. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the joint meeting of the Hyde Park Town Board and Planning Board. Please join me while we pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, I have to say this feels very exciting. <laughs> it just goes to show what we've been doing for the last year and a half. Um, but yeah, it really is a wonderful feeling to be back in town hall, uh, um, listening to a very exciting project. And so um, I would like to go ahead and extend my warmest welcome uh, to the Belfield team. And um, in a few moments, maybe what we should do is go around and uh, introduce ourselves. and. Um, I'll, I'll turn it over to you, starting with Larry Boudreau. Right, thank you very much. Uh, Larry microphone. Boudreau, Jason Company. Microphone. Remember us? Microphone, microphone. I'm used to Zoom. Thank you very much. Uh, Larry, Larry Boudreau with the Chase and Companies. Jennifer Van Tile from Cuddy and Fader. Nicole Emmons, Hart Howerton. And with us here is uh, Steve Geraci from T-Rex, and Tom Mulroy will be here any minute. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. Uh, Victoria, would you like to start? Hi, I'm Victoria Polidoro, attorney for the Planning Board. Ann Weiser, Planning Board member. Brent Pickett, Planning Board member. Stephanie Wasser, Planning Board member. Ann Dexter, Vice Chair. Chris Oliver, Planning Board member. Diane Tanapoli, Planning Board member. Okay, and then we also have. Uh, Chad Moss, Zoning Administrator. <laughs> okay, and as long as we're at it, we might as well just go ahead right, right down the line. Donna McGrogan, Town Clerk. Ken Schneider, Fourth Ward Town Council. Stephen Woodcock, Ward 3 Councilman. Uh, Aileen Rohr, Town Supervisor. Uh, Emily Spenson, filling in for Warren Raplansky uh, as uh, Town Attorney. David Ray, uh, Councilman, Ward 2. Neil Krupnik, Councilman, Ward 1. Okay, great. So uh, again, uh, a warm welcome to you all and uh, definitely a cause for celebration and I appreciate everyone's uh, dexterity, we might say, and being able to organize this meeting with um, less than 24 hours notice. I think the governor repealed the uh, executive order on Thursday afternoon, I think, and then by Friday we were able to organize everyone so we could um, have this meeting right here, and it really does feel good. Um, so we're here tonight uh, to uh, welcome the developers of Belfield at Hyde Park for a presentation on their application to amend their existing concept plan. Um, and again, um, we're hoping that uh, we'll see Tom momentarily, the uh, head of this whole operation. And here he is. <laughs> Are you sure you were waiting in the hallway? <laughs> Great entrance. Yeah. Great entrance. Yeah. Great entrance. Yeah. So, uh, hi. Uh, so well, thank you very much, uh, Madam Supervisor. We're all very excited to be here as well, and it's. Uh, so exciting to see everyone looking so three-dimensional after a year and a half of seeing everything in little squares. This is very exciting. So uh, as you noted, we're here to present our pre-application uh, for a concept. You, actually, would you mind if I interrupt you first? No, not at uh, all. Just because we did want to give a little bit of an introduction so that the members of the public can kind of be brought up to speed. So my apologies for no not problem. kind of segueing into that better. but. You know, we just, it's been such a long time that this project has been uh, kind of on the shelf that I thought I'd just give a brief introduction and history to it. So in 2007, a concept plan was approved by the town of Hyde Park for a project known as St. Andrews at Hyde Park, uh, located in the Belfield Planned Unit Development District. The property is 339 acres, located on the east side of Route 9, across from the Culinary Institute of America. So uh, unfortunately, the stock market crash of 2008 and the resulting recession upended the project for a number of years. After more than 10 years, the project was revived under a new owner uh, and name, Belfield at Hyde Park, under the leadership of Tom Mulroy. Uh, in 2018, the planning board 
uh, provided site plan approval for the first phase of the project for a 130 room hotel, the Inn at Belfield. Site preparation work, including installation of underground utilities and roadways, has commenced. The project developers received their building permit for the hotel in late 2019, and it has been renewed once since that time. So fast forwarding to June of 2021, the developers are coming to town to seek an amendment of their approved concept plan. This is in the purview of the town board, while all approvals for site plan are in the purview of the planning board, thus the joint meeting. Uh, so to assure that all our boards have the appropriate review, uh, the application is coordinated in a cooperative way, and we are holding the first of several joint meetings of the town and planning board tonight. So to refresh everyone's memory, uh, the 2007 concept plan approval for the site included a ratio of approximately 50% commercial and 50% residential development, with 30% of the commercial development required to be tourism based. This complies with the plan unit development zoning of this district. While the zoning for the district doesn't specify a way to amend the concept plan, we are sensitive to the dramatic changes that have transpired over the last 14 years in the commercial real estate market, particularly in the way that brick and mortar retail has been transformed by online purchasing. With this in mind, the developers are seeking amendments to their concept plan that among, the major, among other major changes would alter the ratio of housing to commercial substantially by increasing the residential component of the, of the project to 65% and reducing the non-residential component to 35%. The height and length of the buildings as well as the housing type, whether owner-occupied versus rental, are additional significant changes. A few other items to note, uh, the town would like to see a phasing plan as well as information from the developers on their expectation for a payment in lieu of taxes. So we look forward tonight to hearing about the proposed changes and we'll welcome the public's input as we go forward with the review process. We hope that the developers will be cognizant of the complexity of the project and will be offering a hands-on opportunity for Hyde Park residents to look at the plan closely and to have their questions answered um, on the, the changes to the plan, including the changes to the composition of housing type, the amount of housing and uh, versus commercial, and other details. So copies of the plan are available for review on the town website. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to <laughs> Jennifer Van Tile. Thank you very much. And uh, we welcome the comments of everyone on the plan. Um, uh, we're very excited to be uh, beginning the process of review and uh, this is the very very first step uh, in a review process that is uh, um, quite extensive and so we are hoping that after the presentation tonight you will authorize us actually to move forward with an actual application that would be reviewed by TAD and reviewed by the Planning Board but we certainly recognize that we're at the beginning of the review process and welcome uh, everyone's comments as we move forward. I think I'd just like to begin by putting this application in the context of what the town has already said about the Belfield property in its zoning. Uh, the town has recognized that at 339 acres in size, this parcel is the largest area of potential development in the southern end of the town but it is also very important that the de development of such a site be done correctly, which the town zoning law also recognizes because it's at the entrance to the town, it's the actual gateway into the town coming north, exiting the town of Poughkeepsie and entering historic Hyde Park. And because it is an historic property in the context of other historic properties, so central uh, to the town's entire uh, history and purpose. So it's because of those reasons, both the size of the property and the special nature of the property, that the town protected it by placing it in the Belfield Plan Development District. Now this is an interesting zoning district because it forbids going directly to the planning board like everybody else can and says, no, because of this, you must develop this property in the context of a PUD, a process which I think we can all admit is 
quite complicated. Um, so that proper attention is paid to all of these factors, the very special nature of the property. It, reviews, it requires review by the town board and the planning board acting together with substantial opportunities for input from the public. But in addition to being complicated, your zoning law makes the PUD process a real challenge to creativity. Your law says that PUDs are intended to allow more creative and imaginative design of land development. In other words, this is not a site for cookie cutter development, but something that's really organic and innovative, something that is definitely good for the town as well as for any type of market. So in order to meet the challenge of allowing more creative and imaginative design and land development, Tom Mulroy has spent the last year brainstorming with some of the most creative minds in the country in all fields related to land design and land uh, development to come up with a plan that makes sense. And that's why we're here with uh, an amended plan that we believe is something that um, is of the moment and um, uh, speaks to everything that Hyde Park has identified about itself. So at this point, uh, to, prevent, to present the vision of the property, I'd like to introduce Nicole Emmons, an architect, uh, with Hart Howerton, who are the planners and architects for the project. And she's going to present the uh, project vision for the concept plan amendment. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you to the supervisor, council members, chair and planning board members. Can you hear me? Better? Is this better? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this evening, we're, we're joined by some members of the project team. Um, just wanted to let you know that I'm, I'm not alone in this project. There are many uh, who share this responsibility and the excitement of working on this project together at, at Hart Howerton, at Chazen, um, members of T-Rex Capital who are a part of our team, integral parts of our team, such as Annie Farrell, who's the head of agriculture, um, Gardner Theobald, uh, Steve Nygren, who is a land uh, planner and developer and has um, a company called Nygren Placemaking, very much a part of the visioning of this place. Bill Browning with Terrapin Bright Green, um, who is the uh, lead lead mind on biophilic design and really incredible part of this team. Um, Weitzman, Corcoran, um, and many others, and there will be many others um, in the future. So whenever we're in front of you, uh, there are many more um, who are with us. Hart Howerton is a land planning architecture, landscape architecture firm. Um, we are privileged to be in places that are unique and one of a kind. And that is part of um, how we do our work is to work alongside landowners, developers, homeowners um, at all scales and in some really pretty incredible places, some of the most special and unique places across this country and, and internationally as well. I show a couple of different images, some in New York, some in California, out west, in the, in the Caribbean and so forth. Um, because in fact, each place is unique and our solution and our plan for each place is unique. So not one of these plans that we've worked on before is applied to the next place we work. Is not, so again, Belfield is one of those unique places. Um, so when the image of Belfield um, is part of the image um, board of projects where we've worked, it will have its own distinctive character and its own distinctive identity. As we um, set out uh, over a year ago, so well over a year ago, so it's very exciting to be here in person. Um, I, I, you know, you get you have the list of names, you have had moments on Zoom and so forth with the squares, but the magnitude of members of the community who are integral to the town um, is really well represented here by the number of active members of planning board and council. It's really very exciting to be in front of you. Thank you so much for the time. Working um, with the team, the proposed goals of the plan are to look to create a modern, contemporary community 
that is focused on agriculture, so unique in that it's connected to the culinary and cultural traditions, traditions of the region. And it's building a place that's connected to nature within the framework of the land that's here today, within the framework of the region. So when we look to um, work together with the client team, with the engineering team, with the other designers who will work on this, um, speaking to potential tenants and retailers and um, members of the agricultural community, uh, we never start at Hyde Park. We never start at this Belfield site. We look regionally. Where are we in the region? Where is Hyde Park in the region? And how can we take that context and really work within a tradition of place and create a place for today. But also, this is not a, a one-year plan. This is a plan that will, will be a place of legacy. It's a, a long-lasting place, um, much like many of these incredible institutions that are within, within the region. And then also, as we, as we look to Belfield and look around uh, the context of where we are in the, the great estates, the great institutions like the Culinary Institute, uh, this is really a place that peop uh, many people are attracted to. They're coming to this region um, from, uh, from the city. They're coming to this region from other parts of the state and, and even from uh, further afield. And they're coming because of the history, because of the character. They're coming because of the culture and the relaxed the relaxed lifestyle, uh, the opportunity to get out and move beyond the place where they live, and the opportunity to connect to the land. Um, so with Belfield, we've, um, we've looked to create what's called an agrihood, and this is a term that's used, uh, there are principles of an agrihood community that the Urban Land Institute has, um, has documented and listed, and what we've looked to do is not to take each one of those principles and, and plop them down on a plan and say we fit an agrihood, but to but to look at the place and the land and understand how elements of an ag a, a connection to the land, a, f a small scale food production and a small scale agriculture can be knit into the landscape, can be knit into choices about those plants um, and those um, edible uh, landscapes that are a part of the community landscape. And as we look to these, what are the ways, that these principles that the ULI establish, what are some unique ways to um, incorporate this into the community? So we're very excited um, when we work at the scale of a land plan to also think about the landscape and to think about the scale of walking through the village or one of the neighborhoods and to understand how we might have an opportunity to integrate the, the plant material that is more agricultural based, food based, or even the potential tenants um, in a retail environment so that it's, it's not a place that is as leased by um, space, but it's a place that's leased by experience. So how do we create a retail mixed use community that further reinforces the ideas of the plan? So agri, agri hood, biophilic design, and I, uh, will apologize for not being able to speak to this to the level that Bill Browning um, is able to do as, an, um, as a leader in defining this and promoting and also um, helping to bring a connection into nature, into design from the scale of buildings in the city to the scale of communities like Belfield. Um, but we, we have looked very specifically at how these um, ideals and vision of a biophilic, a connection to nature for a community can be integrated specifically into Belfield. So where that um, might mean making um, opportunities for larger view sheds, vistas for individuals as, as you're within Belfield to understand your place in the landscape, um, your place in the larger context, um, creating opportunities for um, sound, for scent, um, many ways to connect to nature opportunities for, it also goes along with sustainability and wellness, to create um, a landscape that is comfortable for a walk, um, to meet up in an open space. So how, how do all of these principles from agrihood to biophilic design start now to inform um, the plan? So now we look very specifically also at what is there today. What, is the, what are the um, 
native plants there today? What are the opportunities for incorporating um, rock or the stone wine tower or the views um, from, from, the, from the site itself? Where are we in the context of Hyde Park? Where is Hyde Park going? What is the next step for your community? Where is the opportunity to connect to larger trail systems within the state? Um, opportunities to to be part of um, an entry experience for example and then we also look to understand the um, in some ways the geometry of the site or um, the the topography for example the the opportunity for um, frontage we have oh, just over a mile of frontage um, on route 9 and the site itself is a depth um, of roughly 3,000 feet uh, to the east of, of Route 9, but then that itself is a changing experience. So the topography of the site comes into play. Um, here is a, um, a color map indicating the, the levels that are um, lowest to mid to high, and we, we started to refer to these as the benches of the site, um, where the topography was had the greatest change. Um, which is an area that has uh, preserve and wetland, and then the mid-range, and then the, the lowland, uh, which is still perched up and over um, Culinary Institute and the site um, adjacent to the Hudson. And to also understand drainage patterns. How does water move on the site? What is the existing hydrology? Where are the wetlands? Where, is the, where are the natural uh, water features and the um, in particular, some of the really pretty incredible moments on the site, like the Marucci Kill. <coughs> and in putting those opportunities and constraints together, that started to inform where and how development could fit within the landscape and for fit within the um, natural features of the site. So we began to look at how we might um, organize and organize opportunities for a series of neighborhoods. A uh, scale of development within a neighborhood becomes um, much more uh, approachable as far as a pedestrian scale, as far as how do I walk within the site? How do I journey from one place to another comfortably and do that um, outside, not in a car? How do I make connections through open space? And by also, how do we cluster the development so that we can then preserve and enhance some of the open space connections to create larger community-based scaled open space. So as we began to work through concept and as, as Jennifer had mentioned, the brainstorming uh, with the various, um, various members of the team at the table, um, as you see here, the, the landscape itself began to be the framework around which uh, and from which the development and the, the plan, uh, the amended concept plan, um, would come through. So in looking at the plan and the opportunity and then beginning to look at it, break down to the scale of neighborhood and then further think about the scale of opportunities for different product type um, and the, the metric and the scale of the walkable neighborhood, um, we, began, we organized into a series that you see here and if this has been reinforced in opportunities for um, as I said, d different product type, but also in the design guidelines that are proposed for the project um, to create different character. The village itself is the mixed use core, and that in fact is where there is that opportunity for um, more expressive, in fact, architecture, maybe more expressive of the agricultural tradition because it is a uh, commercial and mixed use scale. Um, so as we move into the village, how does the architecture and the landscape reinforce those traditions and the principles of connecting the indoors to the outdoors, <coughs> connecting people to the community, connecting the history and the current uh, proposed program of small scale food and agricultural traditions, culinary traditions to this place. Um, so in looking, and I realize it's a lot of a lot of information and, and <laughs> um, I know you have a lot of information in front of you. I want to make sure that f um, for the public there's this opportunity um, both to see these slides as I'm presenting but also we, we know there'll be additional opportunities to to have uh, the ability to respond to comments and also to speak 
um, with members of the community. But, but to give a quick overview, really understanding that the, um, the opportunity for the village to now respond to the mixed use core, to respond to the, the market, to respond to um, the community as it's, been, as it's changed in 14 years, as the market's changed in 14 years, as the retail and commercial environment has changed. And as I mentioned, um, as a core component, how can the, this place and the retail and commercial experience reinforce the guiding principles and the vision of an agri-hood or an agricultural-based community and a community connected to nature um, and, and to avoid that disconnect? So as we um, started to go into more detail with the plan, that included incorporating um, and understanding the open space within this village core. So you'll see a series of village greens and gathering spaces around which the opportunity for commercial retail as well as a Main Street experience can connect both from field and forest to the water tower, so the length of, of Main Street. So um, a few concept images. These are these are inspiration images that we have shared um, and have included in parts of the design guidelines as well. Um, so in thinking differently about a uh, retail environment, how, as I mentioned, the traditions of more of a, an agricultural scale or vernacular might inform a commercial experience, and then how that, um, that village core can become part of a larger community network of trails and connections to open space. So where it might be, a, there might be the opportunity for a forest trail within one block of Main Street, there's also the opportunity for a village green gathering space. Again, right, right on a Main Street experience. Um, so the community, the, the greater community of Hyde Park, visitors and guests to Hyde Park, and the town, um, as well as to residents of future residents of Belfield, will have a variety of experiences that are um, fundamentally connected to a landscape that is um, a native landscape, a landscape that is um, an evolution of the the form of the site today. And then that art, that architecture, and that built uh, the vertical, the built um, environment. Uh, can reinforce that. And that's in the materials. It's in proportions. Um, it is in um, breaking down the scale of a commercial building so that it, it feels comfortable to the pedestrian. Um, it is thinking about roof forms, the profile against the sky, um, shadows on buildings, projections, opportunities to shade um, a pedestrian experience with um, a gallery or, or um, an arcade or opportunities for balconies, again, to create shadow and shade um, on, and have that outdoor experience as well. Um, mu much of which your um, planning board and your design review board um, have spent a lot of time thinking about and um, we've uh, appreciated um, it, the information that's been made available to us, um, which has been really helpful as we've looked um, to bring Belfield into the context of the town of Howie Park and also to allow for Belfield to um, become a place that over time um, has it grows and has a community um, that reflects uh, this time and the diversity of experiences. Um, so really um, our, our goals tonight are to, to, um, to present to you the, the vision, the ideas behind um, a place, uh, a place that we feel is integral to the region um, that has um, evolved out of um, the last uh, number of years and really can, can knit itself into um, the future of, of this area as well. Um, so a variety of elements that have gone into the thinking behind the plan um, where we can discuss it in more detail. Um, but certainly it is an opportunity for, as Jennifer mentioned, um, a place of its time and um, a place uh, to fulfill the goals of the, of the PUD to 
to have a creative approach, um, to think um, specifically about the community experience, um, to provide a scale that is walkable, to, to privilege the pedestrian, to privilege the community experience um, over the car, over um, a, a route through, and, um, and really create a place uh, that is a legacy um, for the town of Hyde Park and, and beyond. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. I guess the one thing I'd just add to that is uh, I think it's important that we underline the fact that there is no proposal to change the amenities that were uh, public and available to every resident of the town of Hyde Park from the original 2007 approvals. The roads are still going to be privately owned, but uh, open to the public. There is still the, um, the pre preserve of the land on the uh, eastern side of the site. There's still uh, the, the entire complex of the public trail systems, et cetera. Again, um, we're here to give the pre-application uh, overview, recognizing that there's uh, many, many details about this. And uh, of course, there's a um, uh, the environmental review which will be undertaken to examine um, the proposed changes uh, and and to uh, evaluate the potential adverse environmental impact if any of the of the proposed changes but I just wanted to emphasize that because I think it's important that everyone understand that while this plan is uh, uh, a change it's a change that is truly for the better in the sense of privileging the pedestrian over the car etc but not in any way uh, proposing to take away the public benefits that were essential to the original plan thank you Jennifer did you want to go over the timeline for the process for the approval well um, As you, you know I it? think it's a little premature and I don't want to presume anything in talking about a schedule because I think uh, that's not for us to say it's really for the lead agency to say uh, overall in the process this is a pre-application which is required under your code before even though we have in fact filed application materials because uh, Tad has an awful lot to go through <laughs> so we wanted to make that information available to Tad so that she could begin reviewing it but um, uh, we now would ask you for authorization to formally file to pay the required fees and escrow for that to refer the application to the planning board which I think at this point is the lead agency for the project and um, and then the board would have to undertake its review so I, I don't think that I could say anything that, that there's no automatic uh, time deadline for that to happen naturally um, uh, we have always appreciated and I'm say, speaking not in the context of this application but I think uh, everyone who's appeared before the planning board or, or the boards in Hyde Park appreciates the fact that the boards make every member available will hold special meetings if required your planning board meets twice a month which is a great convenience to applicants um, and so naturally we we would appreciate it if you would spend every waking moment <laughs> thinking about our project but that might be <laughs> that might be <laughs> a little too much so um you know we we would trust that the project would proceed apace but i think at this point it would really be premature okay. for us to estimate any particular time for anything okay, well we appreciate that and Thanks. um you know my understanding of the next step is we have a resolution on our agenda tonight to uh, in fact refer it to the planning board for mm -hmm. seeker and other matters and you know we do expect some uh, back and forth and yes. some dis further discussion some uh, digging into details and um, the expectation is that the planning board will provide the town board with a recommendation or uh, you know mm -hmm. feedback within 60 days and so um, that's kind of the timeline that we're looking at initially um, but you know we look forward to you know further discussion on the many many details and Nicole that was uh, thank you so much for uh, you know a lovely overview and um, you know it's an exciting project we're um, 
thankful for your investment uh, in Hyde Park. We agree, it's a wonderful place. And uh, <laughs> so we look forward to working um, through this application with you the, um, for the amended concept plan. So I know uh, the planning board chair likes to uh, follow a process where he, <laughs> Your, your reputation precedes you. Um, and, you know, where he um, does ask for his planning board members for um, a short you know, statement or a little feedback if they feel uh, that they would like to do that. Again, don't feel compelled because this is really your uh, first overview and first look at it, and so it's, it's a lot to absorb. But um, I'll hand this over to you, uh, Chairman Dupree. Thank you, Supervisor. <coughs> The chairman does like to follow a process. You are so right. Uh, and I want to thank Jennifer Van Tal for her kind words. We do try to put ourselves out there for you to have offline meetings whenever possible. Um, it, it, it's nice, by the way, to see everybody back in person again, too. I feel like I'm it, it, old home week here. So thank you. Um, let me start to my left. And once again, these are probably going to be broad comments because we'll be providing detailed comments to the town board on the new concept plan. So. Um, Ms. Polidoro, do you want to comment on anything you've heard tonight in terms of process? No comment, just that I agree this is a pre-application workshop. Um, it's very preliminary at this point, um, but once TAD reviews and determines we have a complete application, the planning board can start to dig in. Thank you. Ms. Weiser, comments? Um, I think at this point my qu comments and questions will be a little bit too micro. So I think <laughs> we're looking at this as a, from, a, from a macro position right now, so I have no comment at present. Um, I think my comments are, I've, you know, it's been, what, 13, 14, 15 years since you originally set anchor. Been a few storms and everything since then, so it's uh, time to pull up anchor and reset it. Uh, I really like what I've seen so far. Um, I'm familiar with, you know, I've lived around the country and I've got kids that live down in the woodlands in Texas, so you see oh. some of the nice architecture be modern with sciences, you know, mixed in with it. So uh, I had a number of notes, but it was almost all marketing related of where. Mm. I plan to move in five or ten years. <laughs> <laughs> Do I, you know, look for a place that uh, bicycles and pub crawls and, and things like this? And so I'll be quiet. I like what I've seen so far. I think there's a lot more details, but so far, so thank you. Thank you. So macro is an interesting comment <laughs> concept um, I'm going to try to be very brief and start with um, I like big thinking and I I like the um, concept of the neighborhoods and examples of the architectural design uh, the use of natural resources it's a very exciting project it's huge um, and so that brings me to again if if you're going to come in on a, in a formal basis, you'd want a little feedback. Mm -hmm. My thinking on this is that um, my concerns are with bulk, length of some of the buildings, height, density. Um, 844, promise it's not micro, 844 um, units, an average of two people per unit, increases the population of Hyde Park by about 8% more or less. So to me, that is a hugely impactful project. And so just going to be looking to see it, you know, get more information as we go through and see how you might be able to address that. One thing I didn't see in, in all these wonderful drawings and the beautiful presentation is um, you mentioned one mile of frontage on Route 9. And I would like to see a perspective, rendering, elevations, of what this project is going to look like from our side of the river, from Route 9, north and south. You know, the topography, as you mentioned, slopes from the low up to the high. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be, um, you know, a very iconic development for Hyde Park. And I'd really like to see what, everyone, what we're all going to see when we're driving through the gateway of Hyde Park. Mm -hmm. So I hope that was macro. Yeah, 
thank you. That was a wonderful presentation. Um, I really appreciate the the new look that was is being taken uh, for this project. Um, I was on the original team that looked at this lo those many years ago. <laughs> it's actually coming up to almost 20 years because um, 2003 was when That's right. the very first. That's right. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Tom, you've 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 spent enough time around Hyde Park. It's it does sound like you're you've taken a good sensitive look, and I do like the team that you've pulled together. Um, you know, I remember again, low those many years ago, I was very concerned about the density. What I've noticed here is that you've you've taken the cookie cutter out of it. You have, um, I think taking out 15% of the commercial is going to make a huge difference. I think a lot of the commercial that you are proposing is actually really environmentally lovely commercial. Um, you know, when I see barns and wineries and breweries, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's kind of where I want to be. And I think that is how Hyde Park is shaping up. So, I'm just very appreciative of the time and effort that you've taken to bring this to a new level that hopefully can stand the test of time. I don't think the original concept could have really have stood the test of time. It couldn't even get off the ground. Um, but this is looking, I think Aileen said it best, very exciting. So thank you and I look forward to going through all the fun of Seeker and, and, and stuff, but uh, thank you. Mr. Oliver? First off, thank you very much for a very well put together uh, presentation and some great ideas that you're bringing to Hyde Park. Uh, I think it's going to be absolutely essential um, to bring that local scale commercial to a small community because that's what we're about here. And the effort you've put forth with the adapt, you know, adapting to the changing uh, climate with different businesses and different development rather than just giving up on a project and going forward you know, you're really taking the time to dive in and, and look at things on a, on a micro scale, but on a, you know, macro project. So we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Mr. Napoli. It is wonderful to see you all again. <laughs> and I also know we always have exciting projects when you're before us. So thank you. Um, I echo what my colleagues have stated. And I don't know if my comments are macro or micro <laughs> or if there's something in between. But you know I'm going to say something. Uh, um, to follow up on Ms. Um, Wass's comment about the density, what I did just to make it simple for myself to get the concept, um, out of the 844 dwellings, if you assume that there are two people, that brings it to 1,688 people. And to put that in perspective for me and how I visualize things, I pulled up the latest um, numbers on the village of Tivoli. And they have a population as of 2019 of 1,118. So this project has about 500 people more. And they have almost, they have a little over one and a half square miles and this project is on what was it 300 339 right so taking Tivoli and plopping it here with that that's where my concern that's how I could understand oh the density <laughs> is really paramount for um, for this project um, I like what you've done. I'm really thrilled about the changes. I know um, Serenby, if I'm saying that correctly, in Georgia, I, that has always been one of my favorite places. And um, it looks like you're trying to take the best of theirs, which I really um, am thrilled about. The other comment that um, is about the second hotel. Um, the proposed 300 rooms of a luxury hotel plus the 130 plus rooms of the first hotel 
I am concerned of how it's going to impact the small businesses in the High Park Poughkeepsie area of flooding and almost really being detrimental to the area. Um, I could see it having a big negative impact. I'm not saying all these places should survive or should not survive. It's just the impact it might have. Um, and I guess I was always under the impression that the second hotel was going to be about 90 rooms. So I don't know where that, I know you're looking puzzled too, but somewhere along the way, the number 90 was floated. So that's a big difference. Um, so just to keep that in mind, also knowing that other towns in the area are also putting up big hotels. So does that define micro, macro, or somewhere nope, in between? Those were great. <laughs> Thank those you. Were great. Thank you, colleagues. Um, obviously, you've heard positive comments overall, and I'm not going to wade uh, out of that sort of mode. I think that the layout, uh, this has been evolving over time, and I've been watching it, uh, but the layout, I think, is very reflective, as I believe you put it, Jennifer, so it's privileging pedestrians over cars. Mm -hmm. This is an improvement to the original design. That noted, it is a big change in the concept of itself. Um, the applicants went from, I believe it was 53% uh, residential and 47% non-res in the original to much higher numbers for residential, and that is a big change. That sort of is why you heard Diane be able to say that you're gonna be plopping a, a Tivoli-sized village down at the base of the hill. Um, so from sort of macro viewpoints, I wanna first hone on something that Ms. Wasser said, which is that the view from Route 9 is still unresolved. There are images you've provided, but when I read through all the material, it states that at some point you're going to be thinning and limbing up the existing vegetation along Route 9, and then they're going to be the fields. Um, the original concept plan, actually, when I went through all those materials over this last three months, they actually added landscaping into the buffer along the front because the concern was that it was going to look sort of like, you know, the Galleria Mall. Nothing, every, all the trees removed uh, and then blank space. That was never the intent here, but I just want to make sure that we have an understanding, as Stephanie said, of what we're really going to see once this is all ultimately up and built. Uh, second, I still remain... I find the fiscal impact analysis problematic. I think it needs more detail, and I think it needs to be tied to phasing. It's stated that you don't know what your phasing is going to be, which I can accept, but we're not trying to nail your feet to the cross on this one. I think you must have some idea of where your first phase is going to be, and I'm going to guess it's going to be in the center where the village is. That's even stated at times in the narrative. So I'd like to see some way that we can actually understand what the fiscal impacts are to the town first year going through your probably 20 for full build out. The one that's been provided has uh, everything built out at, fully built out at 10 years, but it also compares, it shows what the taxes, and the advantages to the community would be and to the county, as though that full build out happened in year one. And I myself don't find that acceptable for an analysis under seeker. Um, I've made this statement before, so I, like I said, also they're relying a lot on the Dutchess County Economic Development Corporation report from 2007, and that should be included. Um, besides the fact that that information is likely dated, it just keeps saying referring to it without ever showing us what the sort of worksheet was behind it. In addition to that, some of the estimates it said were based on talking to the assessor, but we don't have any of that information. There's like, not like a worksheet for it. So for example, you have an event barn. How's the event barn going to be valued and therefore taxed? Does it even raise, does it even produce tax revenues? Because um, it's not stated that that's going to be an event barn where people will rent it, or if it's just for members of that community or what? And again, that's getting into more details, but this is based on sort of the macro, the concept itself. I personally, in terms of the concept, remain sort of troubled by seeing the four-story buildings. And I thought about this a great deal because I understand from Tom's perspective why you want to build those um, in many ways. But we don't have any four-story buildings in the town of Hyde Park. You see those more in the center of the city of Poughkeepsie, which, and, and even taller ones. And that's, that seems like a sort of urban look to me to have four stories in a town where the rest of everything is either two-story with just a few three. Um, that's going to be up to the town board to uh, decide ultimately. But I've always thought of Bellafield as being a transition area. As soon as you leave 84 and go up Route 9, uh, I shouldn't say as soon as you leave 84, once you hit uh, Fishkill, then Wappinger, you pretty much have urban sprawl all the way up. This has been some, a sort of psychic green space that separated the town of Hyde Park from the town of Poughkeepsie, Poughkeepsie and the city of Poughkeepsie. 
Um, I accept that, that that green space is going to be largely lost in some ways, even though you're providing a lot of great open space. Um, but I just want the town board to make sure that they're thinking about this. If it's really a transition area, is this maybe just letting town and city of Poughkeepsie come further north, and then we have our kind of suburban, sort of rural town that leads then to the rural areas to the north, Rhinebeck, Red Hook, and on to Columbia County? Because I've always felt us as sort of being the bulwark of trying to keep our small town charm and identity while the rest of the communities to the south of us have kind of lost some of those because of the urban development right along Route 9. Then last, um, we've gone around, I know, some of us about the, the description of some of the lots as being just tax exempt and whether that's a use or not. Um, but I just wanted to point out that, that those were originally planned to be educational uses for the tax exempt parcels. Now it's considered tax exempt culinary education or uh, agricultural. And we need to kind of work that further down as to whether or not agriculture will be exempted, whether the fields as shown would be exempted. I believe that's you have to show so much of a percentage, and that's des decided by, I believe, ag and markets, but at least the state. Um, so I'll be looking to see what more details you have provided on there. But otherwise, I think this is a smarter, better concept in every way than what was there. And yes, Ann and I are the only long haulers who were here for the first part of the original plan when it was done. Uh, and so it's also for, I know Ann and I personally discussed this, it's exciting to see it come back and finally think, well, this is going to, this could happen, and not only could it happen, it's more realistic than what was there before. I mean, honestly, and I said this before, both publicly and privately, what they were showing, what was originally shown and approved, really looked like it belonged in the middle of Dallas, Texas, like with rich people. The, the stucco with the red tile roofs everywhere, I kept thinking, this is going to be like Gucci and MAs, and there aren't Gucci and MAs buyers here a lot around, not just in, in Hyde Park, but in Poughkeepsie in the area. Um, the original concept, they relied on drawing people from Millbrook, town of Washington, Amenia, sort of the Richie Kratz, I'll call them over there. I've lived here 28 years, and I've got news for you. The Taconic is the, it's sort of the dividing line. It, it, it's... They don't come over here. Every once in a while, I'll talk to people and say, why don't you make me a brasserie in Poughkeepsie? And I don't go over there. If someone says, when be for dinner over at Trabeck, I'm like, hmm, that's an hour each way. So you're, you're probably not going to draw shoppers from over there. You're really going to draw tourists that come here already, and we want them to stay and linger. I think you're providing that in this environment. So thank you. And now I'll turn it back over to you, Supervisor. Okay, well, I uh, just would like to thank uh, my esteemed uh, colleagues here on the board and uh, extend my thanks for your longevity, <laughs> 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 your dedication, and I mean, how, how lucky we are that uh, we have such consistency. I, you know, I, Anne, did you say it was 15 years? Is it 15 or? Oh, that we? We've, yeah, been, serving, yeah, that no, we've been serving 17 years. 17. Long, so boiling. I, I feel that we're very fortunate to have uh, people with such perspective, uh, being able to really uh, recall clearly what the former plan was and what the weaknesses were of that and how you've tried to um, address those. And uh, I, I do want to allow my board to weigh in, and I'll start in with uh, Councilman Schneider. Well, again, I'd like to uh, say thank you for uh, a wonderful presentation. Uh, I know that uh, you know, we're really looking forward to a, a good concept there. And, uh, you know, every day we drive by, we're always looking for a shovel on the ground. So, uh, you know, that's kind of what uh, Ken Schneider and Ward 4 is looking for, is a, a shovel on the ground. So uh, I'm looking forward to this next process. And then uh, hopefully I can give two thumbs up when I see a shovel on the ground. <laughs> We um, keep it simple on yeah, this side. <laughs> <laughs> I just want a shovel on the ground. That's all I want. Just, just put a shovel on the ground. We're really <laughs> macro. Yeah. And not with a hard hat and one of those gold <laughs> shovels. You know, I want, I want to see some backhoes I over have here. a beautiful shovel. I know you do. I do. do. <laughs> that yeah. gave me That's that not the time. shovel I'm looking for. I, I want a claw on the ground. You I know have it I mean, in my Tom? office if you want. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking for a claw on the ground. Um, my uh, my job brings me all over the place, um, three different counties, uh, all over Dutchess County, Millbrook, Amenia, uh, High Park, um, uh, right in Poughkeepsie. I work for Adams Farragher Farms, so right in that little area, I've seen developments like this go up and go up fairly quickly. Um, and uh, speaking to Ken's point, it is very exciting to see something like this um, happen. I mean, it's happening right down the road uh, right now with the stop and shop and other things continuing. So um, from a uh, 
macro point of view, it, it looks like a great concept. You guys have, uh, I know the type of work that it takes and the time it takes to put this together and you, you've, done, you've done the work. Um, I'm excited to see what happens um, from here. And, and yes, when is a, when is a shovel gonna go into the ground um, and, and start seeing something developed you know, um, on that site? Uh, I, will, I will speak to the, the viewpoint on nine as well. Um, I know there are some renderings here, um, but I would like to see, because I, again, traveling down nine, I saw the hospital come down, I saw it clear cut it, and it just opens it wide up. And uh, being in the landscape industry, I know we don't start with planting big trees. Um, they start small and they take a long time to grow. So um, I, you know, that was one concern that I would have is, is how much of the original landscape um, or, or existing larger trees would you guys be be holding on to and keeping to sort of um, make it look like it's been here for 20 years. So that, that would be my only input. That's great. Well, Stephen is a manager at Adams and so has daily experience with landscaping and is actually uh, very thoughtful and experienced. And so that, that's good insight. Thank you for that. And um, council, would you have any input? No, I'm not okay. uh, So David Ray, oh, I was this waiting is- for counselor. Okay. And, okay. and David? Uh, yeah. I, um, I've lived here more than most of you, uh, longer than most of you here. And uh, the town you stand at Fuller Lane, right where Aileen's house is, and uh, mm -hmm. that was it. Dirt road, that was a dirt road going down to the river. Um, what, it's exciting to see this project, you know, it's like out of my league. This is Hyde Park, that's because I'm an old timer, you know, but uh, I love this town and it was small and I knew everybody that one done. And uh, now this is in Ward 2, the whole project's in Ward 2. Yeah. So you're talking about a lot more people in my ward. Yeah, a lot easier to campaign there. I'm not going to run it. <laughs> <laughs> How is it close? <laughs> but it's going to be, uh, I'm going to be out of office by the time. I um, what Michael did say um, was always on my mind. <clears throat> I used to say, uh, I was here in Hyde Park. Uh, there was no zoning or planning, you know. You want a gas station, put it up. You don't want a drugstore, you know. Whatever you want. And we did have retail stores, and as you all know, retail setting has completely changed. I was in business, I had two businesses in town, did nice here. But I always used to say, um, you know, Rhinebeck's smart. Like, what do you mean? I said, well, they saw what happened in High Park, and they're saying, no, we don't want it. We're putting our hand up like this. And almost like what, what Michael said was, you know, from Fishgill up through Wappinger's Poughkeepsie, and then you hit Hyde Park and you got green. And, and I'm really afraid to see, you know, it's not gonna be a Ferris wheel in the middle, but it's gonna be a big development. And uh, if it's done right, it's gonna be beautiful. Again, it's out of my league, but uh, I wish you the best. And, uh, and I thank God we have this planning board now that really looks into things. And I'm very proud of the, every member of that board. They speak their mind and they make me think and we didn't do that years ago, and we end up with a mess. So uh, this is not a mess, a beautiful thing you're presenting. So I wish you luck, and uh, hopefully everything will go fine. And thanks for, you know, developing, trying to develop. Great. That's it. Thanks, Dave. Well, yep. thanks, Dave. As, as you say, you have a lot of perspective. I do, yes. Yes. nothing yes. else. Yes. <laughs> 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 and so Neil, uh, counselors. So, uh, thank you, Tom, Larry, Jennifer, Nicole. Great presentation. Apparently, you could have just had a slide of a shovel in the ground. And, uh, <laughs> so, but I'm glad that you went the extra mile. Yeah. Uh, and I, I really want to thank our planning board. Uh, I've spent a lot of time with these folks, and they uh, are great thinkers, mm -hmm. and they really care about this town, and I trust them. And I agree with a lot of the comments that were said tonight. Uh, I am concerned about the density and the number of units um, out of the 844, 372 are apartments. And so that's probably my biggest concern. Um, but I, I'm really excited about this project. I can't wait to walk around and be a part of it and go to the restaurants and the winery and the brewery, et cetera, et cetera. I think it, it's 
will be great for Hyde Park. And there's a lot of details that have to be worked out between now and who knows when. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the process. And uh, thank you. Thanks, Neil. Great. Okay. Well, um, thank you all for your astute comments. Uh, and um, I just want to take a moment to clarify a few things. Um, Council pointed out that uh, when I said there's 60 days to give the input, um, she corrected me, that it's actually not specified 60 days uh, for the planning board to refer a recommendation to us. So I just wanted to make that clear. Um, and I also just want to make clear that, um, because as several people have asked me, well, is the hotel in jeopardy? The ho and I want to make it very clear that that hotel has a, a pro is approved and has its building permit and will be going up. And so that is not um, uh, before us, uh, that ch a change in the hotel as it relates to the concept plan. Um, and just a further update is that the uh, Belfield has applied to the planning board and received preliminary approval to uh, fully build out their sewer system, and so um, we were, um, we're well on our way. Um, we all appreciate the beautiful stone wall that you added, as well as the lighting, and I know you've, you've been really hard at work um, during this very difficult time in COVID, and who knew, right? But um, you persisted, you're, you've, um, you're really trying to tune in to what is this vernacular? What is this sense of place that we're trying to create for Hyde Park? And I agree, the images you showed are really right on, and we appreciate that. But I think that, um, again, it is this sense of place, this Hyde Parkness uh, that we are trying to accentuate. And, you know, as the chairman said, you know, that has a lot to do with the scale, with the mass, the height, and, and how that's integrated. And so I think that's going to be, for me, the focus, and, and it has been, um, because I, I do want to remain Hyde Park. And uh, as we we see, the sprawl of Poughkeepsie is, is coming up Route 9, and the great thing is it's in our school district. So. <laughs> uh, that's really good for our taxpayers, and that kind of brings me uh, to my point, another point is that, you know, this is a great opportunity for the town and for the residents so that uh, we can continue to grow our tax base, which we have done uh, really quite well. And again, thank you to the planning board because in the last year we added, I believe, 10 million to our, our taxable base. And that's, that's a great thing. And so this is really an opportunity for our community to reduce the tax burden on, on, on our existing residents. And we take that uh, very seriously. That is why I mentioned the pilot, because we need to make sure that uh, our residents receive the benefits um, that they can from this project. And, and I know from talking with Tom how how much time and energy and, and passion he puts into it. And so, you know, we were eager to work with you uh, to really hone that sense of place, create the project that works well for you, works well for the community. And um, again, it's, it's, it's said that Hyde Park is the place where upstate begins, and we don't want to lose that. We want to make sure that people don't go, oh, wait, what's the difference between Hyde Park and Poughkeepsie? Where does it stop? Where does it begin? So I think that's the challenge for, for you and for us. And, um, but I'm confident with the wonderful team you've put together. Um, you're all a pleasure to work with. And uh, we look forward to the next steps. So I guess that's the, f I got the final word. <laughs> you should. Resolution. And, and my husband says I always do. So. <laughs> but uh, Neil, do you want to go ahead and read the sure. resolution? Resolution 628-1 of 2021. Resolution authorizing the Town of Hyde Park Town Board to refer the application to amend the concept development plan slash comprehensive development plan for the St. Andrews at Historic Hyde Park development in the Belfield Plan Development District to the Hyde Park Planning Board for further action. Second. Any second? Yeah. Okay. And Donna, might you do a roll call, please? Councilman Krupnik. Aye. Councilman Ray. Aye. Councilman Woodcock. Aye. Councilman Schneider. Aye. And Supervisor Roark. Aye. It's all yours, guys. <laughs> okay. Well, um, we look forward to your input and to further discussions. And 
again, thank you for coming to our town hall. And it's, it's really good to be together and feel the energy. It is, and thank you all for being here tonight and for uh, all the work and review that you've put in, even at a pre-application. <laughs> we, we certainly appreciate it, and we look forward to, we appreciate your candor as well. Um, we really want to know what the issues are, and I think you've been very clear in telling us what they are. Uh, so we're going to be um, very focused on those points, uh, the visual point, the actual, the numbers, the physical points, all the points you've raised. Uh, again, thank you for being forthcoming in that respect. Um, and we're going to start digging into that and we'll proceed immediately. I'll call you tomorrow, Tad. <laughs> and we can uh, work on getting the application fees filed and uh, trying to schedule at the planning board as soon as possible to proceed. Well, thank you so much, okay. Jennifer. You're always a pleasure to work with. So may I have thank a motion? You. Before we adjourn, I just want to remind everyone that this Saturday is our 4th of July parade, and it's going to be live. You know, we're going to have a blast. Step up at 10 o'clock, so uh, that, that's it. So I make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. Good night. Goodbye, everybody.